Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'll show you how to add Shift to Sprint into your game. And for some reason, if you don't know what this is, it's just the ability to press the Shift key to make your player go faster. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so the only thing you have to do to add this into your game is add a local script under the starter player scripts. And before we take a look at that script under the starter player folder, down at the very bottom under the controls option, make sure you uncheck this box right here. What this does, it prevents the user from using shift to lock the mouse because we're going to be using shift to sprint instead. So now let's go ahead and write our local script. We're going to start by getting the user input service and we're going to do that by saying local user input. And we're going to be setting that equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put user input service. And we're going to be using the user input service to check to see whenever the player clicks on the shift key so that we can increase their speed. In addition to the user input service, we're also going to get the player service. And we're going to do that by saying local players is equal to game colon get service. And this time we're going to say players. Next, we're going to define two new variables. One of those variables is going to be the sprint speed, and the other one is going to be the walking speed. So for the sprint speed, we're going to say local sprint speed. And you're going to set this equal to whatever value you want for your sprint speed. I'm going to start it at 30. Now we're going to define the walk speed. So we're going to say local walk speed. And the default walk speed is 16, so that's what I'm going to use. Next, we're going to define the local player by saying local player is equal to players dot local player. So for the user input service, we need to know when two different things are happening. One of those things is when the player is holding the shift key, and the other one is when the player releases the shift key. So we're going to define two different events, one for that press and one for the release. We're going to do that by starting with user input, which is the variable we defined up here that gets the user input service. After that, we're going to say dot input began and we're going to connect this with a function and the function we're going to make we're going to call begin sprint and then below that line we're going to say user input dot input ended colon connect and then we're going to be connecting this with a function called end sprint so this one right here is looking for some type of input to begin which in our case is going to be the shift key being pressed and this line right here is looking for inputs to end, which in our case is when the player releases the shift key. So now that we have our two different events defined, we need to create our functions for each one. We're going to start with this one right here. So we need to make a function for that. So we're going to say local function. The name of our function is going to be begin sprint. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put input, which will be the input object, which is whatever key gets pressed on the keyboard. And we're also going to put another parameter, which is game processed. Inside the function, we're going to start by saying if not game processed. Then the first thing we're going to do is check to see what type of input we're getting. So we're going to start by saying if input. So this is talking about the input object we get up here. So if input dot user input type. And if this is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard so we're checking to see if the type of input we get from this input object is from the keyboard if it is from the keyboard then we need to check to see what key it is and we're going to start that by saying local key code and this is going to be equal to input dot key code then we're going to say if key code is equal to enum dot key code dot left shift then we're going to say player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed and we're going to set this equal to whatever our sprint speed is okay so what we're doing so far is whenever roblox notices some type of input has begun it's going to store that input object inside of this parameter right here. 
Then inside the function, we're checking to see what type of input object it is. And we're checking to see if it's a keyboard input object. If it is from the keyboard, then the next thing we're checking is to see what key on the keyboard is being pressed. And then if we notice that the left shift key has been pressed, then we're going to change the humanoid's walk speed equal to our sprint speed, which we defined up here. Okay, so that handles when the shift key is pressed. So now what we need to do is whenever the shift key is released, we need to set the humanoid walk speed back to normal. The function for that is going to be very similar to what we just wrote. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste it. And the only thing we need to change is the name of the function. So we'll change this from begin to end. And then the other thing that we have to change is for the walk speed part. Instead of setting it to the sprint speed, we're going to set it to the walk speed. All right, and that's all we have to do for our code. So let's go ahead and take a look and make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Okay, so now that my player's in the game and I press shift, I see that he starts running. And as soon as I release the shift key, he goes back to normal. All right, and that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.